I renewed my driving license last week. It was simple. Did it online, renewed for five years, cost me $208. And you don't really need to be a good driver to have a driving license. And sometimes good drivers lose their driving licenses. And we have people here who have actually lost their licenses. And why? Not because they were driving dangerously, but you, we get caught by rules and regulations. School zones, 40 kilometer zones. Uh, there are zones going into the tunnels here in Sydney where it's 60 kilometers. And most people think that a tunnel is an 80 kilometer zone. So as soon as they enter the tunnel, they speed up to 80 kilometers. Unknowingly, the first section of the ramp into the tunnel in a lot of sections here in Sydney is 60 kilometers an hour. So they get pinged multiple times. Then you have double demerit. Somehow there are times in the year where, where you can get twice the amount of points taken away from your license and you can very easily lose your driving license. And none of these things mean that you are a bad driver. You may be one of the better drivers on the road. And there are actually some worse drivers who get away with it. And they are the ones who would cause accidents. Now they say that driving is a lot safer nowadays because of technology. They have instigated seat belts and you've got airbags. But you've got to realize that these things don't stop accidents from happening. What they do is they try to save you when an accident does happen. You cannot feel totally secure in the fact that everyone on the road that's driving around you have got a valid driving license. Well, we paid for our contractor license a few months ago and it was for five years. And whilst you get a driving license renewed for $208, a five-year renew on a contractor license is well over $2,000. Now, what does a contractor license mean to the rest of the population? I think it gives homeowners a false sense of security. The whole of the license is not meant to guarantee you that he knows what he's doing and that you can feel secure in the fact that he's going to look after you and you will get the product that you pay for. And this is what rules and regulations and licensing all means. It is supposed to make you secure, but in reality, there is no security. And this is a story about security and how we are promised security if we obey all the rules and regulations and norms that has been set in place for us to embrace. Life as a roofer has one physical risk, and that's the risk of falling off a roof. So how high is that risk and how is it managed? And what are the rules and regulations about height safety for roofers? Now, in my 20 odd years in the roofing game, I've fallen off the roof once. But I've had lots of other falls. I corrugated on. So, you, you, did you fall flat? No, I just slid down on my bum like a. Slid on your bum? Yeah. And, yeah. and what actually caught you? Did you actually the fall off the roof and the gutter? The gutter, the gutter and, and uh, just landed on a skillion roof. Okay, correct. Mason, when did you last time you slid off a roof? When the last time I fell off a roof? Uh, I fell backwards off a flat roof and yeah, so I was, I was walking down a ladder, ladder slipped out and as I fell off, I grabbed onto the brick wall. So the ladder slipped, ladder yeah. slipped. So you much like what Jeff did. Yeah, like what Jeff did. It's important because the harness is not going not gonna to help you if you, if you fall off a ladder, right? Because yeah, it's sketchy. Nah. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the ladder is the sketchiest part and, and for us roofers, it's not really whether you wear a harness or not, right, uh, on, on a roof. Uh, there are times when you do have to wear harnesses. And I've, I've come off a roof, similar to you, uh, Hewitt, because I was on a roof and it started to sprinkle a bit and mm -hmm. I went 
lost your footing. And I went, uh, I better get off the roof. Too, yeah, I, I, I better get off the roof, right? And then I slid off. Off the roof, I caught the gutter. No gloves? No gloves, but that was good. I yeah, caught yeah. the gutter, I bent the, I bent <laughs> the gutter, and then I landed on the deck, all right? So I was okay. I, 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 just a huge thump. And then Jeff called out from the other side, what happened? I said, no, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I've had lots of other accidents that have been worse working on a roof. And the worst ones are you step on a ladder and the ladder slides off the ground, which means that you get all tangled up with the ladder as you fall to the ground. And you can actually cause a lot more damage than physically sliding off a roof. So you say there are rules and regulations uh, to safeguard us, aren't they? You put up safety rails because that's regulated. Uh, you have harnesses and, and the authorities have set up regulations to safeguard roofers like us from falling off the roof. But from my experience and a lot of other roofers' experience, it is not falling off the roof that is a problem. It's actually the ladder that causes the problem. But there's still the emphasis on rails and safety. So just like in the driving example, now if you knew how to drive correctly, defensively, you will never ever need those guardrails on the road. You'll never ever need your seat belt, nor would you need an airbag or anti-lock brakes. And you may ask the question, what about the other drivers? Well, you can't really control what they are doing. By being aware of what's happening around you on the road and being aware of my own ability to drive and being able to foresee what can happen, it has prevented a lot of accidents. And it's the same with roofing. When I get on a roof, I've got to be totally aware of where I am. Now, on a roof, you know that you can't fall off until you are at the edge. So when you're close to the edge, you do take the extra precaution. And the result is I've been roof safe. It's not because I've complied with all the safety regulations that's been placed on our industry. I just approach it like I'm responsible for my own security. It's not anyone else's responsibility. There's no one to blame except myself. And that attitude is the best form of security I can think of. So 20 odd years in the roofing business, what have I learned about security? I think the major lesson for me is that I didn't need for anyone else to provide for my security. I had to create my own security. And as I developed my business, I knew that I had to get good and once you become good at what you're doing then you can be fully secure that you'll be able to be paid for it and that is a lot more secure than an ordinary job. So the key is be really really good at what you're doing and even if you are in the job if you're really really good you will always been in demand. So you create your own security, knowing yourself, what you're capable of, and not looking for someone else to blame is the ultimate security. Okay, I'm not quite sure what story will come up next, but I'm sure it'll be something that I will want to talk about, and maybe you want to listen.